Hello, I'm Dan Eisenberg, Professor of Management Practice at Babson College. It's difficult for someone like myself, speaking from the comforts of Babson College, where the lights and heat and air conditioning function perfectly, where we have good food, water, and shelter, we have convenient transportation and telecommunication, access to doctors and medicine. It's difficult for us to grasp the depths of tragedy that have befallen the country and people of Haiti, and our hearts go out to you. Last week on National Public Radio, I listened to you, President Preval, announcing that the reconstruction of Haiti is starting. The emergency, you are careful to add, is not over. There are still tens of millions of cubic feet of rubble to remove. But the rebuild is starting to take place. I cannot pretend to be an expert on how to rebuild a devastated nation from scratch. I only know about how to build companies from scratch. I'm sure you've heard from many well-intentioned people that there's opportunity in crisis. And I'm sure in your heart you thought that is an opportunity I would rather do without. So I don't want to gloss over the unmitigated pain. Nevertheless, as you rebuild your transportation, communications, health and institutional infrastructures, I would like you and your fellow Haitians to consider that Haiti will benefit tremendously from understanding that there's an infrastructure for entrepreneurship as well. Try to treat the entrepreneurship infrastructure as as important as all the basic ones. So what is this entrepreneurship infrastructure and how do we build it? In addition to what we normally refer to by that term, it means building an ecosystem that's conducive to entrepreneurship. For example, it means turning entrepreneurs and their ventures into national heroes. In 2009, a Haitian venture, Alternative Insurance Company, won an international competition that is quite prestigious, Pioneers of Prosperity. Turn them into heroes. Encourage the development of an entrepreneurial culture that tolerates risk and is cognizant that honorable failure is the price of ambition. Perhaps Haiti already has this, I don't know. But usually, media have a bias against the entrepreneur because they see entrepreneurship as the realm of the privileged and not the great equal opportunity employer that it is. Create entrepreneurship education on all levels, especially in high schools and colleges. Financial literacy and empowerment should be a national priority. Develop the kinds of capital sources that help grow small businesses. Microfinance, although it has its place, is not the solution. It puts food on the table, but to build thousands of small, 5, 10, 25 person businesses, some of which will grow even much larger, you need to build special capital intermediaries. Forget about venture capitalists for now. That's a completely different game. And forget about the conventional banks in this regard. Good models for investing $5,000 to $50,000, for example, have not been written much about, but they exist and they can be designed and delivered. This can't and shouldn't be philanthropy. Encourage the entrepreneurs to turn such capital provision into a business and give them incentives to do it. The Haitian diaspora should also be a regular part of this infrastructure. Use the millions of diasporan Haitians in the United States, Dominican Republic, France, Canada, and Venezuela. Many of them are successful business people and entrepreneurs. Many have capital, expertise, contacts, not to mention that many have a warm spot in their hearts for their homeland. Turn the brain drain into an asset to help pull more products and services out of Haiti, not people. Get the entrepreneurship stakeholders to work together to coordinate their activities. Usually entrepreneurship is developed piecemeal, but it should be holistic and systematic. It should encourage, engage, empower, and enlist. What I'm describing is not something imaginary. Some countries, some as small as, as Haiti, have actually reconstructed themselves as entrepreneurial societies following tragedies of one sort or another. Rwanda, for example, after the genocide of the 1990s, or Israel, for example, after the Holocaust. 
Slovenia, for example, in the early 1990s, transformed itself after it came out of Soviet rule. Taiwan came out of poverty in the 1970s and 1980s to become an entrepreneurial powerhouse, and so did Ireland. Tear a page out of Taiwan's history book and its use of the diaspora and Taiwanese to completely rebuild Taiwan's economy. Unleashing the natural entrepreneurship potential that I believe resides among the Haitian population can be one of Haiti's most important resources. In some ways, you're actually more fortunate than others in this regard. The historical legacy of economic self-sufficiency and self-employment of a large portion of the Haitian population is actually a hidden asset. Lurking in the ranks of the informal sector are dozens or hundreds or thousands of potential entrepreneurs. The entrepreneurship infrastructure will help them strive for more. Thank you and good luck.